first spoke. Yes, you, get on with it, Ka ordered. The cat is hot. Who first? Left the highlands by military Hoover camel, getting to MPG to wander along Kennedy Street near American International University in Beirut, in a coffee shop with American starburst blends of coffee, brandy, sugar, and spice for to wait at a table for a courier to bring a travel itinerary, tickets, and cash. She arrived wearing a Kevlar burqa light and produced from neath its stealth shrouded folds the packet of no return or date alteration. The approach of Op Mars landing had drawn near maturity. Aboard the Sirhan clan flight from Yasser Arafat International Airport on the shortest day of the year, first thought about the remaining hours before arrival in Ciudad, Mexico, at night with its millions of brownish amber streetlights, a city of shadows he felt at home in, a sacrifice to the pyramid of Ort's liberation protocol. The local cell brothers sent a taxi to transport Hugh first to Tijuana, an op house, safe house, to the contractor coordinator, Cat Hefe, sometimes the leading importer of narcotics, into Del Norte. After hours of high speed and fair asphalt, bumpy roads riding through the night, they drove into the city. Stopped at a traffic signal, Hugh observed three Mexican youths playing a four skilled baseball drill, con mucho gusto. Three fielders, several feet away from a batter, standing alone with a backstop beyond, would each throw a hard ball to the batter's strike zone, who in turn would hit the ball as a grounder toward whatever of the fielders he chose to have fielding throwing practice. In the 60 seconds, the light, the players completed nine circuits of the drill. Hugh compared the increase of Mexican players in the major leagues of baseball with the decline of the apartheided white-skinned Germans of the United States that trained their progeny of pitching machines, as if robots worked in the American League instead of humans with arms and de different deliveries and styles. The taxi arrived at a beautiful mansion set on a cliff overlooking the Pacific Vista. The driver abruptly stopped screeching brakes at the gate and said to Hugh over his shoulder, We kick gringo butt now, get rid of apartheid preventing our conquest of more wealth. No, yes? Hugh answered grimly, You talk too much, hombre, the day is young. At the door, a tall Mexican padrone, looking like a clone of Saddam Hussein with a knife scar up the right of a Fu Manchu mustache, wore a fine silk suit manufactured from patented hyper silkworms, greeted Hugh first warmly, taking him into a bear hug expansively and odiferously. Mi casa e su casa, cabrone. Las plumas de zapata esta aquí. Hugh took a glass of mezcal that was offered and wondered, if the orange worm still lived in the desert. How did it get put together, Hugh asked. Since it's your facility and you are one of the blessed of his magnificence, Lord Bam, I will tell you, deep below the water of the Gulf of Mexico, about 120 miles south of Mobile, Alabama, in the region known as the Mississippi Canyon, at a depth below the surface of 400, 5,000, uh, 4,500 feet. Excuse me, gringo. To be the Benthos production machinery, and had equipment of an oil well, formerly the deepest ocean water production hole on Earth. The oil field is more than 5,000 feet below the seafloor. A layer of salt of nearly three quarters of a mile deep covers the oil. The field operations have been connected for years to other pipelines and shallower waters a thousand feet or less and operated beyond ordinary government police security for decades. The offshore oil operations employ myriad roustabouts, roughnecks, tool pushers, deckhands, engineers, service workers, technicians, and scientists arriving and departing from nations organized by onshore companies, as well as an oligarchy of multinational oil and energy conglomerates serving as a sea in which a few chosen warriors of Fort Bin Laden swim as little fishes below beyond the interest to prime counterintelligence tools of global governments ashore. The Mujahideen and the constellation of offshore oil development fields received and transported small quantities of plutonium from some of the world's production facilities to a safe concrete beaver out niched under the salt of the deep field. When the time and quantity was deemed enough by His Magnificence Ord Bam, the team from Pentrex Oil emerged the weapons fuel from the beaver how and brought it in a piece of broken oil production machinery on an offshore supply boat to Veracruz. The choice of Veracruz as the point of entry for the weapon that would be first striked in the War of Liberation bringing chaos to America was apropos since it was the Mexican port that the monster General Scott conquered in the invasion of Del Norte Americanos in the war that took, us, took our vacation land of California from us. 
Some of your dispensables from Alkira Jiriman took the 60 pounds of plutonium purchased from non-inventoried surplus stock with 100 pounds of next-generation military plastic explosives, enough blasting caps, dead cord and wire for a simultaneous serial implosive detonation of the unwrapped package and worked it up in the mountains before dying from radiation sickness. So many REMs made them sterile. We kept their bodies at a safe location to conceal the cause of death from the federalities. No plagues resulted. Bull clarified the mission history with obvious pleasure, then continued, Your mission will be supported with a time-coordinated diversion in El Paso, Teja. A half hour before your aircraft crosses over the border, three of the world's largest earth movers, 